So um, if you read my bio, uh, I could be giving you a talk about why you wouldn't want to be drinking those bottles of water that's mm -hmm. sitting on your desk right now. And I could, if this were three years ago, I would be giving a talk about the carbon footprint of the choices that you make and give you a visual demonstration of the gas that's produced when we transport water across the, um, by tra by when we transport water. Um, I'm not going to talk about that today. I could also talk about how, what I do now. And so I used to be an atmospheric chemist and I still care very much about climate change and st sustainability. Um, I could talk about what I do now. And what I do now here at the Hopkins campus is awesome and is amazing. And I have a number of students who are in this audience right now who, are, um, who have become my tribe. And I will explain what I mean by that. Um, and what we do is we are, through collaborative learning, trying to combat competitivism on a campus that can seem hostile. And we are trying to build community um, with undergraduates who feel like they should be competing against each other. And um, that's uh, a lofty thing to do. And we are doing that. Um, so I could talk about that as well. Um, I could also talk about um, other things that are very near and dear to me about how um, if we use, uh, if we support our local farmers, that we both build community and combat climate change. I could wrap this all together in a beautiful little package and I could show graphs and I could show pictures of things and um, I'm not going to do that because what I want to talk to you guys about is something that's more basic. And all of those other things, I could talk to you with authority and I could talk to you with um, a degree and conviction. And what I'm going to talk to you about is something that I actually struggle with. And so I don't have a lot of authority on this. Um, and what I want to talk to you about is putting last things first. And so I took the theme that the students gave me and thought about what is the most important thing that I could talk to this room of people and the entire internet about um, for 18 minutes. And uh, my friends think that um, you guys are crazy for giving me this opportunity, but here, here it goes. Let's put last things first. Let's first think about what we want to happen. And then from there, walk very intentionally to where we want to get. And to do that requires a lot of us, and we don't do this very often. And there are a lot of reasons we don't do this. And the first reason we don't do this is because we have to pick a goal, and it's difficult to pick a goal sometimes. And sometimes it's difficult to know what it is that you want to do. And sometimes you get lost because you're doing what other people want for you. And sometimes you don't stop and reevaluate what you're doing and think about why am I doing what am I, I'm doing every day? And I know this is true because this is true for me personally, because I accidentally became a college professor. And um, I say that it was accidental, and I worked very hard. And I have a great degree from a great school, and I had a fancy postdoc with a title, and I had a, an amazing position at Bowdoin College teaching chemistry to amazing students, much like the ones at Hopkins. And I was working very hard to continue that and to get tenure because that's what I was supposed to be doing because that was the next obvious step of what I would do. And um, I fortunately had junior sabbatical. And so I stopped for a minute and thought about what I was doing. And I thought about the sacrifices that I was making personally to do that. I thought about missing my brother's wedding because I felt like I needed to get data. I thought about missing a very important 50th wedding anniversary for people who I love because I thought I needed to get data. And I thought about the personal sacrifices I was making, and it was the biggest mistake that Bowdoin College has ever made was to give junior sabbaticals because I stopped and I thought, and I said, stop. I do not want to do this anymore. And I very intentionally stopped doing what I was doing, and I quit my job. And people thought I was crazy, and it scared them. And um, so my friend Margie wants me to tell you that um, I did this so that I could sit on the couch and knit and eat very good food with my friends. And I do a lot of that now, and I'm a much happier person. 
And some of my colleagues thought I was nuts because I was never going to get another job, but I have another job now, and it's fabulous. And I didn't go homeless, and people still love me, and it's just really wonderful. And so with intention, I stopped doing what I was doing. And um, that's difficult to do. And finding your goal and figuring out what you want to do is also difficult, but you just have to pick one. You just pick one, whether it's for today or the semester or the year or the next 10 years of your life. And you pick one and you start thinking about, okay, how am I going to get there? And it's your goal. And you get to pick it. And you also get to change it. Because when you change your mind about what you want to do, the only person who's going to say, well, I thought you were going to be an English professor, is your mother. And I know this because that's what my mother says to me. And so we have to decide what we're going to do for ourselves. So once we pick a goal, which is not easy, what I think we have to do then is live our goal. And it's not, and so if you think about what kind of goals we can have, we have goals that are about personal fitness. We have goals that are about career aspirations. We have goals that are about our community or, um, or even I want to cook dinner four nights a week is a goal, right? And there are things that you can put into action. But you have to know when you've met your goal and sometimes that's just as hard. It's really easy to say, I want to be a doctor. And it's easy to know once you are a doctor because someone gives you a white coat and there's a ceremony and you're a doctor. Um, Getting there is not easy. What if you want to be an artist? How do you know that you're an artist, right? Anyone can say, oh, I'm an artist. And there are a lot of artists out there who say they're artists and they're making coffee, right? And so what I'm saying is that you have to be very intentional about what you do. And it's very easy if your goal is, I want to run a marathon. I'm going to run a marathon. I have to start running three miles a day and then I'm going to build up, right? And what I'm challenging you, and especially students to think about is in goal building, is that you live your intention and live your goal. So if you want to be a doctor, live, I want to be a doctor. And what that means is that you are going to make A's in those pre-med classes. And you're going to do whatever you can because that's what's going to get you into med school. And it doesn't matter if you want to do all these extracurricular activities. That's getting in your way. Right? And so, if you want to be a doctor, you live, I'm going to be a doctor. If you want to be an artist, you get up every day and you paint. If you want to run a marathon, you run, right? And it's not enough to do this by yourself. Jeff talked earlier today about inviting the entire world to watch, you, watch him lose weight. And I don't know that I would know how to invite the entire world to watch me lose weight, and I think that's super brave. But I do think you invite your people to know. And I think that you do that for the same reason that Jeff talked about, is because by giving people, by voicing your goal, then you are held accountable by the people who love you, including your mother. And you don't want to disappoint your mother unless you really need to, right? And so that's why you share your goal. You also share your goal because you invest everyone else. You make your goal so important and integral to who you are that your friends and your family want to be part of your goal. Like a Machiavellian leader, you invest them in your goal so they start living your goal so they do what you need them to do so that you can be successful. And they do that because they're part of your tribe. And so you need a goal, you need a plan, and you need a tribe. And I have a great tribe. And one place that I am doing this here on the Hopkins campus is through the pilot learning program, which is a coll collaborative learning program. And this semester, every week, I think it's 61 groups meet across campus for two hours every week with a pilot leader. And those pilot leaders are my tribe. 
They are the people I have handpicked and selected to go out and do my bidding. Because I cannot personally do anything to change how you guys think about each other and how you treat each other. I can beg you to be nicer to each other. I can stand up here and wave my hands around and tell you, treat each other with kindness. Be brilliant and be kind. Or I can recruit 70 kids to go out there and do this work and take care of each other and start showing you how to care for each other. And so we've got about 500 kids enrolled in the program and we're caring for each other. And I'm doing that not on my own because I can't do that by myself. But I'm doing that with the help of people who I have invested in my dream and in my goal to make this place a better place to be. So that's what you do. And it's really not hard. Except that you have to stop and figure out what you want to do. And then you have to start walking towards where you want to go. And then something's going to get in the way. And most of the time, you're going to get in your own way. And that's, again, where your tribe comes in. Because your tribe is going to keep you on track. And you're going to use the people who love you and who support you to help drag you through. And you're going to help them. And you're going to drag each other through. And that's what we do. And we do that because if we can figure out a way to work together and if we can get out of our own way and if we can come up with a goal and a plan to do what we want to do, then we can think about combating competitivism on the Hopkins campus. We can think about creating more meaningful communities. We can think about doing great things, like sending people to outer space. We can do thi do think about doing great things, like trying to figure out what we are going to do as the Earth does continue to warm. But we have to do it in a way that's very intentional. And what I mean by that is that we can't just be simply reacting to everything that comes up. And that's one of the big problems that I see, is that it's so easy to walk into my office and just react to the 50 emails that I have and immediately need to do something about the 50 emails that are on my desk instead of stopping and being more intentional. And so again, I'm not good at this. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to be good at this. But the way I think that you do, do it is look for the reason for what you're doing and that you don't do anything unless there's a reason. And you do what you do with purpose and intent. And so um, I think that is about it. I want you guys to treat each other kindly. I want you to take care of each other. I want you to um, think about what you're doing and act very intentionally about what you are going to do because it's really that simple, but it's very hard to do. So thank you. <laughs>